Joe knows and cares about Michigan, and that's what this is all about. Welcome, Mr. Thanks, Vice Bob. President. Glad Thank you're you. here. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Well, folks, uh, it's great to be here in Grand Rapids. I, uh, you know, I want to thank you, and, and I tell you, gosh, you've done an incredible job, and all those associated. I want to thank the docs, the nurses. By the way, docs let you live, nurses make you want to live. Uh, and by that, I mean it's all about hope. My dad used to have an expression. He'd say, you know, it's all about dignity. Everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity. And uh, that's what you do here. Yeah, Tasha, for uh, your leadership at, uh, at Cherry Health uh, and, uh, and uh, welcoming us today, I want to thank you. And I want to thank the governor, because uh, she has protected uh, and advanced health care in this state of Michigan. You know, Gov, uh, as I remember, you were the one who, and when you were in the Senate, uh, secured Obamacare, uh, Medicaid expansion to over 680,000 folks here in this state. And it was uh, Gretchen Whitmer who stopped uh, Rick Schneider and Donald Trump from adding a work requirement to Medicaid. And, uh, you know, Governor, uh, under my administration, you're going to have a partner in the White House who is never, never, never going to undermine Medicaid. As a matter of fact, community health centers like this one are more than just a source, as I said, of medical treatment. They're a source of dignity. You know, imagine having been a significant consumer of health care. I can't fathom what it must be like to turn and look at your child and know they have a serious problem and know there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, have a child with a pre-existing condition and know that there's nothing I can do to help or just being able to be in a position where you walk into a place that is thought to be initially that, well, I can't afford to go to a regular place, quote, unquote. Well, this is one of the finest health centers in the country. You, I, I'm not, I've been to a lot of them. Every state I go into, I go to one, and I visit them. And Cherry Health is where uh, they come to not only get help, but to ease their fears, to get checkups uh, and, uh, or critical screening to get mental health counseling, which we so badly need to increase exponentially, or get treatment for substance abuse. You know, we learned a lot over the last 10, 12 years. You know, uh, uh, substance abuse is not, does not cause mental health problems. Mental health problems cause substance abuse. And so there's so much you do here that it just is, it's, it's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, to get your vision checked or, or dental care. You know, this is essential. And how, how many people, I don't know whether any of you go back to your old neighborhoods and think of the times where your, in my case, or your mother or father had to lay off you being able to go to the dentist, but you, you, had, you had a cracked tooth or you had something that, is, but it, it relates to the whole idea of a person's dignity. And, you know, places like this are essential, essential to the life of the community as a whole. It's not just merely taking care of the health. It's about raising up the notion of who we are, who, what the neighborhood's like, who the people are. And nationwide health centers like this and uh, the number one source of care for underserved communities all across America. And it didn't always make the headlines. But the expansion, as you've and you're, I graciously pointed out, the expansion of community health centers was one of Obamacare's crowning achievements. You know, in eight years, we managed to double the number of facilities nationwide. And in Michigan, Obamacare helped reduce the uninsured population by rate by nearly 55 percent. 4.4 million Michiganders living with pre-existing conditions no longer had to, uh, had to be denied coverage. They were able to get it. And you can truly measure, in my view, you can truly measure the ripple effects of progress it's having on people's lives or in Michigan communities by just looking around. I don't know if the press has a chance to view this facility, go through this facility. This is a first-rate facility. No one comes in here with their head bowed. They come in here with their head raised. And I don't know, maybe, I suspect you all understand it, the press as well as everybody else, what it means to be able to walk in to a place to get help for you or your child or a family member and not have to put your head down, to walk in with your head up, being proud. You know, it sees so much pain in so many ways. And I was proud very proud to work with President Obama to get Obamacare done in the first place. And it will stand, I'm going to stand firm against anyone who tries to tear down the progress and start all over again. Thank you. Now, Senator Sanders is a good man. He's Medicare for all push would be a long and expensive slog if it can get done at all. And the patients at Cherry Hill, they can't afford to wait for a revolution. They're looking for results in their families and for themselves today, immediately, not tomorrow. 
And it doesn't mean standing still. It means offering every single American a Medicare-like public option. That's what I do. I, I restore Obamacare, all the cuts, and add a public option, a Medicare-like option for those who want it. And those who can't afford it automatically would be enrolled. And this plan can actually pass through Congress. And make no mistake about it, result in the most progressive, comprehensive health care system in American history. And when it passes, we double our investments. This is not hyperbole. We double our investments in community health centers like this one. Double it. We double the mental health and substance abuse disorder services. We double resources for tele telehealth uh, nationwide. Less of a consequence in a town as big as this one, but I've been to rural health centers where they have no time to get to the major facility. And telehealth makes a big, big difference. And look, it, and it, 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 the bottom line is this. While this election is about getting uh, rid of Donald Trump, it's also about seeking and seizing the opportunities that have been made available and the next step forward in health care. I'm, uh, I'm not running to destroy Obamacare, the signature legislative achievement of our administration, and start from scratch and wait for something, hope something will pass. I'm running. I'm running to protect the progress we fought for, progress that has lives and breathes here at Cherry Health. I'm anxious to, as you can tell, I'm anxious to get through and see the rest of the facility. I'm running to strengthen it and get to universal coverage quickly and effectively. And I look forward. I look forward to working with, with Governor Whitmer and uh, leaders like Governor Whitmer. Not many quite like her. But uh, no, 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 I really I mean it. No, 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 <laughs> that is. You're incredible. I, I, I really mean it. To make health care system, a re it should be a reflection of what we say we value. Americans say they value decency, fairness, honesty, leaving nobody behind, giving everyone a shot in every community, everyone. And that's what this is about, American values. And I know that sounds a little corny, maybe, but it really, truly is. We say we value folks, and how can you, in fact, say you truly value folks and you really care about them when they don't have an access to basic fundamental health care all across America? When we pass the extension to Obamacare, God willing, you're going to see the most significant increase in availability of health care that ever occurred in this country. You're going to see every American be put in a position where their pride is restored. There's, as I said, there's nothing. I keep thinking of my dad. I remember we lived in a three-bedroom split-level home, and Press has heard me say this before, but it's real, uh, with uh, four kids and a grandpa. And uh, the walls were thin. And I remember one day asking Mom why Dad was so upset. You could hear him li literally tussling in bed, wondering, not going to sleep. And uh, she said, because he just lost his health care. We lost health care. How many people around this country are worried, worried now, that they'll wake up tomorrow morning and not have the coverage, or look at their husband or wife lying in bed and say, what happens if I get, if I get cancer or she gets breast cancer? What happens? What happens to us? What happens if I can't get my child's teeth fixed? He's being made fun of at school. What, what happens? These are basic, fundamental things that matter. And you guys, you make, you're changing lives. You're changing lives. Most of all, you're giving people hope. So I want to thank you all. I know the governor has another appointment she has to make. I want to thank you all. I'm anxious to have a tour, but thank you. God bless you, and uh, may God protect our troops. Thank you so much. Thank you.